So, um, Chief Executive was up there. I want to do a couple of things. It's been a while since we've had an AGM together, and I've spent a bit of time thinking back over the many AGMs actually that we have shared together, and many of the really wise bits of feedback that um, we've received at these annual general meetings. So, I just wanted to have a little bit of a look back, probably over about six to seven years, um, and then talk a little bit, as is as usual at these meetings, about how does the future begin to unfold uh, for Mercy Care. So uh, it's, a, it's a detailed slide, it's a busy slide, but it sort of tracks our journey from 2016 to 2021. Um, um, it's one slide, but it captures a huge amount of change that has been certainly overseen by the board during this period of time, um, guided and coaxed and encouraged by our governors who have been a huge source of wisdom in terms of advising us uh, as well. And it's been a real journey for every single person who works in nursing care uh, in terms of having got to where we got to. So if you look on the, as, as you look up at the top left, uh, you'll see 2016 we became a foundation trust which sort of gave us a small number of freedoms, I think, to act a little bit differently. And if you were to say to me, what was the benefit of the Foundation Trust movement? For me, the benefit is actually having governors. It's not the, all the other freedoms that, you know, the white paper tools we can get. I mean, we've exploited some of those, don't get me wrong. But to have governors and that, that contact with a group of people who bring the outside world in, really, really important. Um, for me, I don't think we'd have governed this quite as well if it wasn't for uh, governors uh, present and past. And my thanks to you, to you all. 2016, we, uh, we, we uh, did the first of our acquisitions when Calderstones and the Zest Trust became part of the Mercy Care family. We opened the life rooms in Walton, do you remember that? It seems like forever ago, but you know, watch this 2016. And that, just up the road from the life rooms, we opened what we, the first of our, our new hospitals in Bolton. And um, I think it's fair to say that gave yeah, us the taste for opening things. And as you can see right through this, we've, um, unlike many NHS organisations, invested spectacularly in the quality of our infrastructure. And that's not because, you know, it's nice for me to stand up here and brag about being able to do this, although I'm incredibly proud of, of the board's decisions of Elaine Derbyshire and her team, who have been just remarkable, our finance folks who have made, actually, the, the money available to do this. Um, Amanda and team, who have done so much work with our uh, staff, uh, as we've done all of this change, and of course Trish and Maya have made sure we've done safely. But one of the reasons we invested so heavily on this work was probably my first annual general meeting, which I think I was only here a week or so, it wasn't long anyway, and everybody kept telling me we needed new buildings. Um, the loudest voice, by the way, was from Southport at the time. We needed to replace Southport inpatient services. Uh, you'll see if you look at 2019, we opened Harkin Hospital. And some of the asks from the annual general meetings have been really, really complicated and have taken time to do. I just wanted to show you this um, as a sort of indication of how we've listened and how we've got on some really big things. 2017, we opened another life rooms in, in Southport. Um, we became a new provider for accepting community services. Again, because so many times at the annual general meeting, people said, why do we make an arbitrary distinction between people's mental health and their physical health? Don't you know, most times, these are the same thing, they're interdependent, they rub off each other. And you know, um, you look uh, at the top there, Global Digital Exam Power, we started to do work in the organisation at that stage to understand the intelligence of what we do. Or, I suppose, understand our data intelligently, if I can put it that way. And we now are able to link our, our data information around patients in a really different way. So I can tell you that 40% of people with COPD looked after by nursing care, that's a chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary 
disorder, um, also have moderate or severe depression. Now, I don't know which way it works in people, but it's important that we know that information. And we produce that information for people with diabetes and other long-term conditions. So that's why becoming a provider of community services was really important. And I think that's how we translated the work that you asked us to do in annual general meetings into practical change. So we, we've grown much bigger as an organisation with more clinical service lines, but it presents us with an unrivaled opportunity to begin to integrate the offers that we make. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. 2018, Liverpool Community Health came our way, we opened another life rooms. We continued our digital transformation. So that unfolded beginning to automate some elements of performance and so on. Um, Hartley Hospital, uh, then in 2020, uh, we opened Roman View, our medium secure service, because we were very conscious that for those clients who were in our secure services, we needed to make sure that their access to much better and more therapeutic environments was as great actually as people in adult or older people's mental health services. So we have a fantastic state-of-the-art facility uh, at Rowan View, which incidentally we opened in the middle of COVID. So um, when other people couldn't do things, I don't know what it is about our executives and the team that we have here, but if you say that's going to be really difficult, they go away and just prove how fallacious the statement we have. And can see Elaine Derbyshire and Bruce Simon and me who, who um, I have just risen to every challenge um, we've ever uh, put their way. We also heard a lot about um, older people's mental health, the well-being of people um, with neurodegenerative or neurodiverse uh, condition, conditions, particularly as people got older. Um, we, we've continued to build and grow great community services because that really needs to be a strong community function. But we also opened Lee Moss, um, our older patients in patient service. Um, I think Tricia might say that was during COVID as well. So, um, so we did a lot in COVID that wasn't particularly about COVID, but it helped us manage uh, the scenarios in COVID much better. And in 2021, we, we have uh, confidently said finished our acquisition journey by bringing Northwest Boroughs into the Mersey Care family, which means we provide services um, and mental health and physical health across uh, the six borders of, of Merseyside and a little bit of Cheshire. Um, uh, we uh, also um, are on the verge of Kaiserlian of a new development on Mosley Hill. So the last, probably the last significant piece of the jigsaw. But when, when this bit of jigsaw uh, falls into place in the new hospital of Mosley Hill, um, I think we will be in, a, in an incredible position of certainly for adult mental and uh, uh, older people's mental health services have had a single ensuite rooms and that will be true for the majority of our services across our forensic sites as well. So uh, and, and not to forget that on the McGull Health Park we will in about a year's time I think open a new low secure service uh, there as well. So it's a, it's a long trot through six years there. There's a massive amount that's happened. But I just want to make the point, um, you ask us to do these things. You ask Beatrice and I probably back in uh, around 2012. I hadn't been at the annual general meetings before that, but I expect folks asked to them before that as well, Beatrice. So I think it's, it's um, really a big point of, I think, celebration really given that this is Beatrice's last annual general meeting class, she can take more than just a little bit of pride in having been really the driver and architect of so much of the change that this uh, slide describes. So thank you for that, Beatrice. Um, the highlights then of the year we've been through, as I said, we welcomed new colleagues in from uh, what was formerly Northwest Forest Healthcare and from Southport and Formby Community Services. Mercy care. Does all of that stuff matter? Well, actually, it does. I mean, in the two years of COVID, our staff have been under the most enormous, uh, sustained, and unprecedented pressure.
lecture. And actually, in a bigger organization with more members of staff, we've had an ability to be a lot more resilient. I think if we'd been a very small organization, it would be very difficult to do all of the things that Mercy Care has done in the last two years, which is, of course, to focus on our core business. But we've also helped out lots of other organizations across Cheshire and Merseyside during this time. As was necessary, we became, actually, because of our scale and size and the services we provide, we became a major part of the jigsaw of the NHS in Cheshire and Merseyside in the Northwest. Um, we, um, we've started redesigning the way we think about the future, where we want to go. You'll see on the bottom strip of this slide, on your right hand side, the three uh, sort of navigational points that we think we need to aim for in the future. The top one is patient focus. It would almost be incredible if it wasn't patient focus in many respects. But I think it's really important organisations continue to rechallenge themselves at every opportunity to say, actually, whatever work we've done on it might be really good work, it's not good enough. There's always an opportunity to do an awful lot more. And we think this, this renewed patient focus and thinking about how we deliver much more personalised care for people. And that relates, of course, to the points I've made about our availability of information using information in a different sort of way so that we know our populations in a very different way. And secondly, we know our populations in a really personal way because we're deep in our populations, talking, listening and understanding all the time. Uh, that we become uh, operationally excellent, not just at providing the services we provide, um, that you classically think of us providing, but that we become much more preventative in what we do. We get more upstream, we reduce the dependency on hospital beds. We reduce the dependency on traditional treatments if we can. And then lastly, uh, clinical and cultural innovation. We can never stay still and we need to continue to look for every new opportunity to make it better for everybody who's in our care, whether that's in the community, uh, and whether that is um, in a hospital bed. Uh, we're an organisation that now provides services literally from head to toe and from cradle to grave and it's a massive opportunity for us to continue to innovate. So the highlights of the year, our staff continued to work in the COVID pandemic, although the level of the emergency has reduced. You don't know that COVID is still a real issue in our communities um, and we have not let up on continuing to make sure that our patients and service users of families and their staff were safe from COVID as can be. Um, uh, all teams from our new mid Mercy service, previously known as North West Borough, uh, have now completed their quality review process, which is a really important part of making sure we get a homogeneous, consistent view across the whole of the Mercy Care, across the six different um, places. Um, to make sure that we get a consistent view of the quality of our services. We've created a new anti-bullying goal alongside our commitment to zero acceptance of racism, discrimination and disrespectful behaviour. And if you really think about that, by taking the anti-bullying perspective, that will be our forcing function for actually not ex accepting any form of discriminatory or excluding behaviour for any of our minority groups in the organisation. Uh, I said we've started our work on Aston Wood, the low security unit, and the replacement for Mosley Hill is absolutely imminent. Um, and you know, we host the Zero Suicide Alliance, and we've developed some really, really great training for that, which nationally, and I think about 2.5 million people in it have um, completed that training, which is uh, again, something fantastic that we've done. It isn't just about the trust, it's about the trust's relationship to the much wider population. It's a social responsibility piece on our behalf. And then last slide for me, what's next? Um, well, uh, you know, we will continue to fight really hard for to provide the highest quality of care for us, our, our, our people in our trust to receive our services. Um, and we will be relentlessly 
pursuing uh, uh, the perfect care goals that we've talked about and all the things that make uh, that happen. We will do this by having new ways of working. We want to be much more intelligent around our information. So a quick example, um, as I said, we, we can connect our data in a way that we couldn't before, which instantly our clinicians, as we progress this, will be able to um, take a look at other pieces of a patient's medical history or clinical history as they sit down for a mental health appointment or view a mental health history while they sit down for a physical health appointment. I mean, that must deliver a lot of benefits. We focus on prevention and work with our partners to tackle the wider issues, the issues of exclusion and poor education and uh, poverty and unemployment and all of the other things that uh, bring people into our services at times. We take every opportunity to give back to our communities financially and in what we do. So we, we'd be a local employer. We've always been a local employer. Every single one of these buildings I've talked about, we focus hard on local employment opportunities. And we need to do more of that so we become a, a, a recognised anchor institution across our, our, our different places. I want us to play a really exciting part in mental health research. We're doing a lot of work, which hopefully next year's annual general meeting we can feature a lot of that. Uh, but it's wrong that people with mental illness are excluded from research trials. That might be new drugs, it might be new social interventions, it might be new digital interventions. But it's wrong that we don't have the same access to research activity as. Um, uh, other parts of the NHS. Uh, we support our workforce and make their work as simple as possible. It's a really easy thing to say, it's a very hard thing to do when you're as busy as we are, and quite actually when you're as complicated as we are. But that's a commitment that we continue to make. And of course, in doing all this, we, we will focus really, really hard on achieving uh, sustainability, financial sustainability, Workforce sustainability, carbon sustainability. So that's um, a quick, well, it's not that quick probably, but it's a run through. <coughs> it says quicker, whatever. But um, I hope you'll see that we've actually listened really hard at every AGM, and if we can't fix it quickly, we don't forget about it. We put it on the sheet and we make sure that some of these big things absolutely get done. Can't get done, of course, unless we take care of the brass, and uh, I'm going to introduce Rob Collins now, who will talk us through our accounts and all the options. Rob, over to you.